position to withstand challenges. I am confident that with Sabka Prayas, we will continue our journey with strong growth. Honorable Speaker, we are marking Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsab and have entered into Amrit Kal, the 25-year-long lead-up to India at 100. Honorable Prime Minister in his Independence Day address had set out the vision for India at 100. By achieving certain goals during Amrit Kal, our government aims to attain this vision. They are complementing the macroeconomic level growth focus with a microeconomic level all-inclusive welfare focus, promoting digital economy and fintech, technology-enabled development, energy transition, and climate action, and relying on virtuous cycles starting from private investment with public capital investment, helping to crowd in private investment. Since 2014, our government's focus has been on empowerment of citizens, especially the poor and the marginalized. Measures have included programs that have provided housing, electricity, cooking gas, and access to water. We also have programs for ensuring financial inclusion and direct benefit transfers. We are committed to strengthening the abilities of the poor to tap all opportunities. Our government constantly strives to provide the necessary ecosystem for the middle classes, a vast and wide section which is populated across various middle income brackets to make use of the opportunities they so desire. This budget seeks to lay the foundation and give a blueprint to steer the economy over Amritkal of the next 25 years, from India at 75 to India at 100. It continues to build on the vision drawn in the budget of 21-22. Its fundamental tenets, which included transparency of financial statement and fiscal position, reflect the government's intent strengths and challenges. This continues to guide us. The initiatives of the last year's budget have seen significant progress and have been provided with adequate allocations in this budget as well. The strengthening of health, health infrastructure, speedy implementation of the vaccination program, and the nationwide resilient response to the current wave of the pandemic are evident for all. The productivity-linked incentive in 14 sectors for achieving the vision of Atma Nirbhar Bharat has received excellent response, with potential to create 60 lakh new jobs and an additional production of 30 lakh crore during next five years. Towards implementation of the new public sector enterprise policy, the strategic Transfer of ownership of Air India has been completed. The strategic partner, the strategic partner for Nilanchal Ispat Nigam Limited, has been selected. The public issue of the LIC is expected shortly. Others too are in the process for 2022-23. The National Bank for Infrastructure Development and National Asset Reconstruction Company have commenced their activities. Honorable Speaker, sir, Budget 2021. Manny Adex G. Budget 2021 is a very good thing. We have to do a lot of things. We have to do a lot of things. We have to provide impetus for Prosan Diajana and Jaira Kagiahe, Iskelie, Amrat Kal, Joe Bhavishik and Roop or Samavishi, 
जिससे हमारे युवा महिलाएं किसान अनुसूचित जनजाति को सीधे फायदा पहुंचेगा और दूसरा आधुनिक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर जो सौ सालों के भारत के लिए होगा और इससे बड़े सार्वजनिक निवेश समानांतर व्यवस्था की गई है ऑफ मल्टी मॉडल अप्रोच मूविंग फॉरवर्ड ऑन दिस पैरल ट्रैक वी ले द फॉलोइंग फोर प्रायोरिटीज पी एम गति शक्ति इंक्लूसिव डेवलपमेंट productivity enhancement and investment sunrise opportunities energy transition and climate action and four with financing of investments pm gati shakti pm gati shakti is a transformative approach for economic growth and sustainable development the approach is driven by seven engines namely roads railways airports ports mass transport waterways and logistics infrastructure all seven engines will pull forward the economy in unison these engines are supported by the complementary roles of energy transmission it communication bulk water and sewerage and social infrastructure finally the approach is powered by clean energy and sabka prayas the efforts of the central government the state governments and the private sector together leading to a huge job and entrepreneurial opportunities opportunities for all especially the youth pm gati shakti master plan national master plan the scope of pm gati shakti national master plan will encompass the seven engines for economic transformation seamless multimodal connectivity and logistics efficiency it will also include the infrastructure development by the state governments as per gati shakti master plan the focus will be on planning financing including through innovative ways use of technology and speedier implementation the projects pertaining to these seven engines in the national infrastructure pipeline will be aligned and aligned with pm gati shakti framework the touchstone of the master plan will be world class modern infrastructure and logistic synergy among different modes of movement both of people and goods and location of projects this will help raise the productivity and accelerate economic growth and development road transport PM Gati Shakti Master Plan for Expressways will be formulated in 22-23 to facilitate faster movement of people and goods. The national highways network will be expanded by 25,000 kilometers in 2022-23. 20,000 crores of rupees will be mobilized through innovative ways of financing to complement the public resources. the data exchange among all mode operators will be brought on unified logistics interface platform designed for application programming interface this will provide for efficient movement of goods through different modes reducing logistics cost and time assisting just in time inventory management and in eliminating tedious documentation most importantly this will provide real time information to all stakeholders and improve international competitiveness open source mobility stack for organizing seamless travel of passengers will also be facilitated contracts for implementation of multimodal logistic parks at four locations through ppp mode will be awarded in 2223 Railways will develop new products and efficient logistic services for small farmers and small and medium enterprises besides taking the lead in integration of postal and railways network to provide seamless solutions for movement of parcels one station one product concept will be popularized to help local businesses and supply chains as a part of atmanirbhar bharat 
2,000 kilometer of network will be brought under coverage the indigenous world-class technology for safety and capacity augmentation in 2022-23. 400 new generation Vande Bharat trains will better energy efficiency and passenger riding experience will be developed and manufactured during the next three years. 100 PM Gati Shakti cargo terminals for multimodal logistics facilities will be developed during the next three years. Innovative ways of financing and faster implementation will be encouraged for building metro systems of appropriate type at scale. Multimodal connectivity between mass mm -hmm. urban transport and railway stations will be facilitated on priority. Design of metro systems including civil structures, will be reoriented and standardized for Indian conditions and needs. Parvat Mala. As a preferred ecological, ecologically sustainable alternative to conventional roads in difficult hilly areas, National Ropeways Development Program will be taken up on PPP mode. The aim is to improve connectivity and convenience for commuters besides promoting tourism. This may also cover congested urban areas where conventional mass transit system is not feasible. Contracts for eight such ropeway projects for a length of 60 kilometers will be awarded in 22-23. With technical support from the Capacity Building Commission, central ministries, state governments, and their infra agencies will have their skills upgraded. This will ramp up capacity in planning, design, financing, including innovative ways, and implementation management of the PM Gati Shakti infrastructure projects. Inclusive development, our second priority. Agriculture, the procurement of wheat in Rabi 21-22 and the estimated procurement of paddy in Kharif 21-22 will cover 1,208 lakh metric tons of wheat and paddy from 163 lakh farmers and 2.37 lakh crores will be, directly payment, will be the direct payment of MSP value to their accounts. Chemical-free natural farming will be promoted throughout the country with a focus on farmers' lands in five-kilometer wide corridors along the river Ganga at the first stage. 2023 has been announced as the International Year of Millets. Support will be provided for post-harvest value addition, enhancing domestic consumption, and for branding millet products nationally and internationally. To reduce our dependence on import of oil seeds, a rationalized and comprehensive scheme to increase domestic production of oil seeds will be implemented. For delivery of digital and high-tech services to farmers, with involvement of public sector research and extension institutions, along with private agri-tech players and stakeholders of agri-value chains, a scheme in PPP mode will be launched. Use of Kisan drones will be promoted for crop assessment, digitization of land records, spraying of insecticides and nutrients. States will be encouraged to revise syllabi of agricultural universities to meet the needs of natural, zero budget, and organic farming, modern day agriculture, value addition, and management. A fund with blended capital raised under the co-investment model will be facilitated through the NABARD. This is to finance startups for agriculture and rural enterprise 
relevant for farm produce value chain. The activities of these startups will include inter alia, support for SPOs, machinery for farmers on rental basis at farm level, and technology including IT-based support. The implementation of the Kane Betwa Link project at an estimated cost of 44,605 crores will be taken up. This is aimed at providing irrigation benefits to 9.0 lakh hectare of farmers' lands, drinking water supply to 62 lakh people, 103 megawatt of hydro, 27 megawatt of solar power, allocations of 4,300 uh, 4, crores of rupees in the RE 21-22 and 1,400 crores of rupees in 22-23 have been made for this project. Honorable Speaker, sir, draft DPRs for five river links, namely Daman Ganga Pinjal, Partapi Narmada, Godavari Krishna, Krishna Pennar, and Pennar Kaveri have been finalized. Once a consensus is reached among the beneficiary states, the center will provide support for their implementation. For farmers to adopt suitable varieties of fruits and vegetables and to use appropriate production and harvesting techniques, our government will provide a comprehensive package with participation of state governments. MSMEs. Udyam Eshram NCS and Asim portals will be interlinked. Their scope will be widened. They will now perform as portals with live organic databases providing G2C, B2C and B2B services. These services will relate to credit facilitation, skilling and recruitment with an aim to further formalize the economy and enhance entrepreneurial opportunities for all. Emergency credit line guarantee scheme has provided the much needed additional credit to more than 130 lakh MSMEs. This has helped them mitigate the adverse impact of the pandemic. The hospitality and related services, especially those by micro and small enterprises, are yet to regain their pre-pandemic level of business. Considering these aspects, the ECG, ECLGS will be extended up to March 2023, and its guarantee cover and its guarantee cover will be expanded by 50,000 crores of rupees to total cover of 5 lakh crores. With the additional amount being earmarked exclusively for the hospitality and related sectors. Credit Guarantee Trust for Micro and Small Enterprises, CGT MSE, scheme will be revamped with required infusion of funds. This will facilitate additional credit of 2 lakh crore for micro and small enterprises and expand employment opportunities. Raising and accelerating MSME performance ramp program will outlay, with outlay of 6,000 crore over five years will be rolled out. This will help MSME sector become more resilient, competitive and efficient. Skilling programs and partnership with the industry will be reoriented to promote continuous skilling avenues, sustainability and employment employability. The national skill qualification framework will be aligned with dynamic industry needs. 
digital ecosystem for skilling and livelihood, the Desh Stack e-portal, will be launched. This aims to empower citizens to skill, reskill, or upskill through online training. It will also provide API-based trusted skill credentials, payment and discovery layers to find relevant jobs and entrepreneurial opportunities. Startups will be promoted to facilitate drone shakti through varied applications and for drone as a service. In select ITIs in all states, the required courses for skilling will be started. Due to the pandemic-induced closure of schools, our children, particularly in the rural areas and those from scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and other weaker sections, have lost almost two years of formal education. Mostly, these are children in government schools. We recognize the need to impart supplementary teaching and, build, and to build a resilient mechanism for education delivery. For this purpose, one class, one TV channel, program of PME Vidya will be expanded from 12 to 200 TV channels. This will enable all states to provide supplementary education in regional languages for classes 1 and 12, 1 to 12. High quality e-content in all spoken languages will be developed for delivery via internet, mobile phones, TV and through radio and digital, through digital teachers. A competitive mechanism for development of quality e-content by the teachers will be set up to empower and equip them with digital tools of teaching and facilitate better learning outcomes. A digital university will be established to provide access to students across the country for world-class quality universal education with personalized learning experience at their doorsteps. This will be made available in different Indian languages and ICT formats. The university will be built on a networked hub and spoke model with the hub building cutting edge ICT expertise. The, be the best public universities and institutions in the country will collaborate as a network of hub and spoke. An open platform for the national digital health ecosystem will be rolled out. It will consist of digital registries of health providers and health facilities, unique health identity, consent framework with and universal access to health facilities. The pandemic has accentuated mental health problems in people of all ages. To better the access to quality mental health counseling and care services, a national tele-mental health program will be launched. This will include a network of 23 tele-mental health centers of excellence with NIMHANS being the nodal center and International Institute of Information Technology, Bangalore, Triple IT Bangalore, providing technology support. Recognizing the importance of Nari Shakti as a harbinger of our bright future and for women-led development during the Amrit Kal, our government has comprehensively revamped the schemes of the Ministry of Women and Child De Development. Accordingly, three schemes, namely Mission Shakti, Mission Vatsalya, Saksham Anganwadi and Potion 2.0 were launched recently to provide integrated benefits to women and children. Saksham Anganwadis are a new generation Anganwadis that have better infrastructure and audio-visual aids 
powered by clean energy and providing improved environment for early childhood development. Two lakh Anganwadis will be upgraded under this scheme. Current coverage of Har Ghar Nal Se Jal is 8.7 crores. Of this 5.5 crore households were provided tap water in last two years itself. Allocation of 60,000 crores of rupees has been made with an aim to cover 3.8 crore households in 2022 and 23. In 22-23, 80 lakh houses will be completed for the identified eligible beneficiaries of the PM Avaz Yojana, both rural and urban. 48,000 crores is allotted for this purpose. The central government will work with the state governments for reduction of time required for all land and construction related approvals, for promoting affordable housing for middle class and for the economically weaker sections in urban areas. We shall also work with the financial sector regulators to expand access to capital along with reduction in cost of intermediaries. A new scheme, Prime, Minister Development, Prime Minister's Development Initiative for the Northeast, will be implemented through the Northeastern Council. It will fund infrastructure in the spirit of PM Gati Shakti and social development projects based on felt needs of the Northeast. This will enable livelihood activities for youth and women, filling the gaps in various sectors. It will not be a substitute for existing central or state schemes. While the central ministries may also post their candidate projects, priority will be given to those posted by the states. An initial allocation of 1,500 crores of rupees will be made and the initial list of projects is given in Annexure 1 of my speech. Our vision to improve the quality of life of citizens in the most backward districts of the country through aspirational districts program has been translated into reality in a very short span of time. 95% of those 112 districts have made significant progress in key sectors such as health, nutrition, financial inclusion and basic infrastructure. They have surpassed even some of the state average values. However, in those districts, some blocks continue to lag. In 22-23, the program will focus on such blocks in those districts. Border villages will, with sparse population, limited connectivity and infrastructure often get left out from the development gains. Such villages on the northern border will be covered under a new vibrant villages program. The activities will include construction of village infrastructure, housing, tourist centers, road connectivity, provisioning of decentralized renewable energy, direct to home access for Doordarshan and educational channels and support for their livelihood generation. Additional funding for these activities will be provided. Existing schemes will be converged. We will define their outcomes and monitor them on a constant basis. In 2022, 100 percent of 1.5 lakh post offices will come on the core banking system, enabling financial inclusion and access to accounts through net banking, mobile banking, ATMs, and also provide online transfer of funds between post office accounts and bank accounts. This will be helpful, especially 
for farmers and senior citizens in rural areas, enabling interoperability and financial inclusion. Honorable Speaker, sir, in recent years, digital banking 